So time to make a loud entry into the world of sound. If a friend is far away and he needs to draw your attention, he will obviously call out your name and you will respond to his voice. Sound plays a very important role in our lives. Most importantly, it helps us to communicate with one another. I mean, can you imagine what a nightmare it would have been if I was to continue talking to you like this? Sound is produced by vibrations in a body. The most common example is your phone. When it rings, doesn't it vibrate? And once it stops ringing, the vibrations stop too. Let me give you a few more examples. If you lightly hit a hanging metallic pan with a rod and touch it, you will feel the vibrations passing through the pan. Similarly, if you pluck the strings of a guitar, you will hear a faint sound and you will see the strings vibrating. Vibrations which are responsible for producing sound are the rapid to and fro movements or oscillatory motions of a body. But once the vibrations stop, the sound also stops. One person communicating with the other, a lion roaring, a horse neighing. All these are sounds which are generated from vibrations. Once sound is produced, it needs to reach its destination. For example, if my friend is calling out my name to draw my attention, his sound should reach me for me to respond. Correct? So how does sound travel? The mode of travel of sound from its point of origin to its destination is known as propagation of sound. And sound needs a medium to travel, which in most cases is air. So what does a sound wave look like? A wave is essentially displacement along an axis. It has a highest point and a lowest point called as a crest and a trough respectively. Similar to what you can see in this picture. Get ready for some terms coming your way. The first one, wavelength. The distance between two adjacent crests is known as a wavelength. Next term, amplitude. This is the maximum distance a swinging or vibrating body moves from its place of rest, which in this figure is the axis. And this is also known as the zero point. Now, do you know through which medium sound travels the fastest? Well, the velocity or speed of sound in air is 332 meters per second. And in liquids, it is actually four times faster than in air. And in solids, like metals, the velocity of sound is 16 times more than that in air. But what will happen if there is no medium? Will sound still travel? Some time back, I defined a term called amplitude. Do you remember? Now, there are two other terms that are associated with vibration of sound. Namely, frequency and time period. And there are two characteristics of sound which are correlated to these factors of amplitude, frequency and time period. Let's begin by understanding what is amplitude. Amplitude is the maximum distance a swinging or vibrating body can travel from its position of rest, which can also be called the zero position or the mean position. The pendulum of a clock is the most apt example that explains this. Moving on, let us look at what a time period is. We looked at the pendulum example, right? And we also understood what is an oscillation. Well, the time taken by the pendulum to complete one oscillation is called its time period. And the number of oscillations completed in one second is known as frequency, which is measured in hertz. So we have studied three properties of sound, which are amplitude, time period, and 
frequency. We have also understood how they relate to its characteristics of loudness and pitch. All clear? The sound of musical instruments like the tabla, cello, guitar, dholak, harmonium are music to our ears. Even some bird sounds like that of a cuckoo, you know, in the early morning or the chirping of birds is refreshing. But if a musical sound becomes too loud, would it remain melodious? No, it won't. It becomes painful and polluting. Confused? How it causes pollution? Well, that brings me to the next topic. It's called noise pollution. If I say pollution, probably the first thing that comes to your mind is air pollution. Poisonous gases released by automobiles, industries, etc. And the presence of unwanted gases and particles in the air is called air pollution. Truth of the matter is, excess of anything is bad, isn't it? So the presence of excessive or unwanted sounds in the environment leads to noise or sound pollution. So if there is damage, there has to be damage control, right? So let us look at some of the measures to limit noise pollution. Because noise is after all unwanted sound and it can be mentally quite disturbing. Also it can harm us indirectly and directly. To control noise, we must control the sources of noise. And how can we achieve this? For this, silencers must be installed in aircraft engines, transport vehicles, industrial machines and home appliances which are the major sources of sound pollution. Also bursting of crackers and playing loudspeakers during festivals, it should be kept to a minimum or even avoided. In humans, sound is produced by the voice box or the larynx and this larynx has a pair of membranes commonly known as vocal cords that are stretched across the length of the voice box. If you place your fingers on the throat, you will feel a hard bump that seems to move when you swallow. And that is the voice box. The muscles around may stretch or loosen the membranes, thus changing the frequency of the vibrations. And these altering frequencies generate a voice of different pitches and decibel levels. Now let us head into the last part of this chapter, where we will look at the structure of the hearing organ, the ear. The ear, our natural, God-gifted hearing aid, is one of our five sensory organs, which we use to hear sounds, interpret them, respond to them if necessary, or listen, or completely avoid them. That is all from me now. We shall meet soon to venture on another journey in the vast and exciting world of science. Until then, keep learning, keep exploring. Tutor me for more amazing video lectures. Download the free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.